Yeah, thank, thank you all for coming today for this press conference regarding a very important project that's going to take place here on the West Virginia Turnpike. And it's a widening project, an eight mile long widening project from the North Beckley exit at Quarter L down to the I-64 split at exit 40. So it's a project that, that's needed done for a number of years and because of the governor's vision of the Roads to Prosperity program, it's now a reality that, that we can start work on this very important project. So uh, today we have with us, <clears throat> of course, the Secretary of Transportation, Tom Smith, uh, the governor of uh, the state, Jim Justice, will be here in a few minutes. And we also have representatives from the engineering design firm of HNTB. We have representatives from CDM Smith, the engineering firm that's going to be in charge of the inspection of this project and the quality control of the work. And we also have representatives from the contractor that won the award uh, to do this project, Triton Construction Incorporated. So uh, as time permits, uh, they'll be available for questions as well from the press. But uh, in addition, we have uh, representatives of the Division of Highways too. We have, we have Dave Harper, the district manager of the Princeton uh, location. And we have Jimmy Riston, who's the project and engineering manager for DOH for this widening project. And I also would like to introduce one of our board members, Doug Epling. Doug is chair of our facilities committee. And basically all of the projects and construction projects we do on the turnpike uh, passes through Doug's committee for approval and for review. So we, we thank him for all of his efforts on the part of the parkways to make all these projects happen as well. Um, uh, we, I, I see Mike Clouser of the Contractors Association here in West Virginia. He's here today as well. Uh, he would also um, be happy to answer any questions you have after the presentation. So uh, initially, we'll, we're, um, I'm going to hand this over to Tom Smith, the Secretary of Transportation, to talk a bit about this project and how it came about. And uh, then he, in turn, will hand the uh, podium over to the governor of the state. And the governor will also talk about the benefits of this Roads to Prosperity project. So um, I see the governor coming in now. We'll wait just a minute till he gets seated, and we'll turn this program over. Welcome, Governor Justice. No, we're, I'm, just, I'm warming them up, sir. <laughs> Good to see you, Governor. Yes, sir. Good morning, Governor. All right, I'm going to turn over the podium now to the Secretary of Transportation, Tom Smith, and he will begin the press conference. Thank you all. Thank you, Greg. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much for uh, having us here and letting, letting us talk about the Roads to Prosperity program. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. I'm, I'm proud to work for this governor who was the person who had this vision of what uh, investing in infrastructure could do for the state of West Virginia. It's all about transportation, but it's so much more than being about transportation. It's about kick-starting our economy. It's about really making West Virginia better and uh, just very much appreciate his vision uh, and willingness to let transportation be such a large part of it. Uh, this is a big program in total. It's $2.8 billion. It's thousands and thousands of jobs and it does provide for immediate economic recovery. A year ago when we got some of the increased fees, we hit the ground running and got a lot of small projects and medium-sized projects going. Uh, and some of those are, are finished. We've got over 275 projects, the smaller, easier projects finished. Uh, the governor has asked us as we've moved into the fall here to really focus on the backcountry road, some of those smaller projects, and, and we are doing that. But we're really proud to be here today on this Beckley Turnpike widening job. It's the first of the general obligation bond projects. It's $106 million. Uh, these are the really big projects that will make a real difference for our state regionally. And, and this is the first one of those to be turning dirt. Uh, so stay tuned. We've got the Coalfields Expressway paving work going. We're going to have Nitro St. Albans Bridge work going up in the Charleston area. Uh, we've got the John Nash to Airport Boulevard project getting started down in the Bluefield area. So these big projects are now starting to come online and will make a true difference in our state's economy. So with that, I, I am very proud to introduce my boss, the 36th governor of the state of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice, who is here to talk to us today. Glad they did such a great job of talking here, you know, for so long. But uh, 
No, I appreciate these wonderful men, and I appreciate all the people that uh, are putting the licks in every day. You know, I appreciate Mike in the back. You know, Mike traveled around with us when we were trying to get this, uh, you know, our bond referendum passed. You know, just let's just go, let's just step back. Step back just a little while. And, and think about this. You know, I wore this shirt today because it has a tribute to the military, and I just was able to uh, do something with the new, you know, military affairs building and everything that's going to service, you know, the Beckley area and several counties around and, and, and you know, and do great work for our veterans, you know, that, uh, that have given us everything, everything. And so, so you know, it, it's really a special day to have had that honor to have been over there with many of our veterans and, uh, and, and just share with them a new facility that they'll have that'll supply all kinds of support for all of them and thousands within our area. So, but let me, let me just go back. You know, when I walked into office, the reality is just as simple as this. And there's no point in continuing to beat this thing because we want to look to the future, but we learn from the past. In all honesty, like it or not like it, but the day that I walked in the door, we were bankrupt as this state. There was no way around it. We were flat, DOA, no way around it, no matter what anybody says, it's just fact. Nowhere really to turn. You couldn't take more money out of rainy day because everybody feared our bonds being derated, and they were derated even though we didn't take more money out of rainy day. Now, since that time, our bonds have been moved back up. But, but just think, why were they moved back up? What really happened? And here's just what happened. And I, I give all the credit to the good Lord in my life for everything, everything. But the reality is just as simple as just this. I came with an idea. The idea was just this, is what if we were able to let every road job that we had designed tomorrow? It's as simple as that. It's the only thing that I could possibly come up with that would create an instant job. An instant job. And lo and behold, we traveled around and our people embraced that concept, and they got on board. And we did it, and people were afraid that if we did it, we were going to have drastic taxes that were going to have to, you know, be, you know, put on the backs of all of our people, and they weren't. Were the taxes raised after we passed this? Not a dime, not one dime. At the end of the day, we pulled it off, and today just like many days that have already happened in the last year or so, we've now completed, I don't know, but hundreds of projects, $98 million worth of projects, and we're now we have Garvey and Turnpike and whatever bonds that are kicking in, and we're doing $350 million more projects, and there's so many more to come. Now, here's what's happened with that. And this is the most impacting thing of all. That one move, that one move, and our commitment to education on top of that as a second move, and our commitment to our veterans on top of that as a third move, all those moves together changed perception. It changed the way people look at West Virginia. It changed the perception, perception of our bondholders. It changed the perception of our president in many ways. It changed the perception of the world. Instead of looking at West Virginia as dark and dingy and backward and ignorant and all that kind of stuff, now they're looking at us as a diamond in the rough that they maybe missed. A diamond that has four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet, natural resources that abound like crazy, the greatest people in the land and, and a position located within striking distance of two-thirds of the population of this country. Now, there is such a thing as a standard of life. A standard of life. 
in the state of West Virginia, the very first thing that everybody looks at in the standard of life is where are my kids going to go to school? That's the first thing they look at. And so we had to put a stake in the sand that we were going to stand behind education. We were going to let it be our centerpiece. Well, everybody was stunned about that. Well, how can it be? How in the world can it be? The second thing in the standard of life pyramid is highways, your roads, how you move around, how you're able to move around and people come and people leave and all that stuff. And so, you know, along came the great Tom Smith and we were able to get him and that was good stuff. And then along came all you good people that are out there that really know how to do the work and make good things happen. And so, boom, off we go. Boom. All of a sudden, the reddest numbers in the world, the bankrupt state goes away. All the bad numbers went away. Well, how in the crap did it all happen? I mean, it happened just absolutely because we made the right moves on the chessboard with the guidance of the good Lord above, and we're off and going. Now, like it or not like it, and I'll take any question you may throw at me, and I'll try to answer it as best I possibly can, but this state is rolling. I mean, we are moving today, and absolutely, I don't see how anybody could possibly, if they were fair, and they looked at the numbers, could possibly do anything other than sit back and cheer us to keep on rolling. We have a president that's a great friend of mine, and he can be a little bizarre at times, I know that. But he's a great friend of mine, and he's a friend of West Virginia, and he wants good stuff for West Virginia. We have the perfect storm moving right now, and we don't need to screw it up. But I'll take your questions now. Okay, let's leave. <laughs> All right, now you're going to have to answer these questions, young man. Uh, we're hoping with uh, Triton, a uh, good West Virginia firm that we have here, that we'll have dirt moving this fall, as early as this fall. Now, most of the work, the significant work, will be next year, starting next year. And isn't it good stuff, too, with Triton? Where are they from? They're not from San Diego, or they're not from Alaska. They're from St. Albans. I mean, for crying out loud, they're a West Virginia company doing West Virginia work. Now, it can't all maybe be that way, but that's good stuff. Good stuff. I'm here for you. I'll answer anything you want to ask. I guess at the end of the day, yes, sir. Um, how many new jobs have you had by this project? Tom, you got to go again, sir. Well, I don't know that I can give you a specific answer, but what I can say is this big project like this has direct jobs that are generated that will be working for Triton directly. It has indirect jobs. That will be engineers that are hired to do work behind the scenes or some of the stuff to fabricate metal, fabricate things. And then real important, and it's the governor's point, it has induced jobs. That's the people working, as the governor says, at the big gulp who are selling big gulps to highway workers at the end of the day. So it has all three of those types of jobs developed with it, and it will be hundreds of jobs. Well, that's right. And just think about this. What is the multiplier? And, and the answer is this. What is the multiplier effect of a $106 million project? That's what, that's what you're looking at. The Procter & Gamble plant in the eastern panhandle was $600 million. This is a $106 million project right now. Okay? The multiplier effect of those jobs is hundreds, if not thousands. And we see it every day. We see it with the revenues that are coming in from the state in every direction known to man. We see it every single day, you know. And not only that, but they'll last forever. You know, that's the other flip side, is how long will our better highways, how long will that benefit us? What's the next industry that it'll bring us, you know? What's the next opportunity that it will bring West Virginia? You know, it's limitless. It's, it, the impact is limitless. The near-term impact is just this, is it's real jobs. It's real opportunity 
for our people to go to work and or others, but it's real jobs. It becomes real revenue to our state in the real jobs. Today, today, it, it's that. Then the multiplier effect of it is all those people are spending their dollars. Most generally, most generally, you can, you can look at a 10 times multiplier effect on every dollar, every dollar of wages or every dollar that's spent. You know, and if it's 10 times, that turns that 100 million turns into a billion. And that billion, to give you an idea of the magnitude of that, this state runs on four, four and a half billion dollars or four point eight billion dollars. You know, I mean, for crying out loud, it is it's big time. It's a big number. OK, again, thank you so much. And. We're going to build more roads. Thank you all.